Kafka was born in Prague, the first of six children in a family of middle-class Jews. He attended elementary school, gymnasium and university within a few blocks of his birthplace. Although he resented having to work to pay bills, Kafka studied law and got a job at an insurance company at the age of 24. Kafka's letters and journals reveal that he was tortured by a sense of his own inadequacy, both sexually and socially, though to others he came off as quiet and intelligent. He had several passionate love affairs but never married. During his lifetime, Kafka is estimated to have burnt at least 90% of everything he wrote, though he consented to publish the Metamorphosis at the age of 32. At 34, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which would lead to his death seven years later. When he died, he left a note for his friend Max Brod to destroy his remaining works. Fortunately, Brod disregarded this request and published the trial of the castle in America. Despite Kafka's relatively small body of work, he has become one of the titans of world literature. The adjective form of his name, Kafkaesque, has become to signify the frustrations of modern existence. Kafka is often associated with existentialism, a philosophical and artistic movement of the 19th and 20th century, whose foundational idea is that each individual is responsible for creating their own meaning. To paraphrase Sartre, existence precedes essence, or life is what we make of it. As simple as it seems, this concept boldly defied the conventional thinking that meaning stems from religion or society. Existentialism became even more influential during and after World War II, and classic works from that later period included Nausea by Jean Paul Sartre, The Stranger by the Algerian born Albert Camus, and Waiting for Gadget by Samuel Beckett. Both Sartre and Camus acknowledged that Kafka's work had influenced their own. Okay, let's get right into the plot. Grigor Samsa, a travelling salesman, wakes up one morning and he discovers that he has transformed into a giant cockroach. He realises he has missed the train and gets acquainted with his awkward new body as he worries about his stressful salesman job. His mother, father and sister, Greta, realise something is amiss and knock at his door, but he finds he can't produce human speech and also can't open the door. His boss, the chief clerk, arrives and scolds him for his tardiness and strange behaviour, even suggesting that his job might be in danger. Grigor finally opens the door with difficulty and gives the clerk a long speech about his truthfulness to his job. But no one understands the speech. His family is shocked at his appearance and the chief clerk runs away. Grigor injures himself when he squeezes back through the door into the bedroom. Grigor finds that Greta brought him some fresh food, which doesn't appeal to him. He resolves to help his family deal with the trouble he's causing them with his metamorphosis. The following morning, Greta brings Grigor rotten food and he eats hungrily. He overhears the family talking about their finances and determining that they will have to go back to work now that he can no, no longer provide for them. Grigor feels upset and sorry that he can't support them anymore. About a month passes, with Greta taking care of Grigor less and less attentively. One day, Greta sees Grigor out of his hiding place and is disturbed. Another month passes, then Grigor's mother wants to help Greta and support Grigor. Greta and the mother plan to move Grigor's old furniture out so that he can crawl more freely. But he decides that he wants to keep his furniture, which links him to his humanity. He climbs the wall and places himself over his print of the lady with the muff, which shocks his mother when she returns to the room, causing her to faint. The father returns home and finds Grigor panicking in the dining room. The father pelts Grigor with apples, one of which severely injures him. Another month passes while Grigor recovers from his injury. His family members are exhausted from working and Grigor feels neglected. The family takes on three lodgers for additional income, and Grigor feels even more ignored. One night, Greta plays her violin for the lodgers. Though the lodgers seem bored, Grigor is profoundly affected and crawls out of his room, enjoying the beautiful music and optimistic that he will be able to help his family and become close to Greta again. 
but the lodgers notice Grigor with disgust and decide they will leave and not even pay for the time they had stayed so far. Kanato tells her mother and father that the cockroach, which she can't even believe is Grigor, has ruined their lives. Grigor feebly returns to his room, thinks of his family with love and dies. The charwoman who cleans the house discovers his body the next morning. Greta, her mother and father decide to take off work. They go to the countryside by tram and talk happily about the future plans and finding a new apartment. Gregor's mother and father realize it's time to find a husband for Greta. The end. Money, or more accurately the lack of it, hangs over the story forming the major pressure of the family. Grigor once transformed can no longer be his family's income source, which makes the transformation more difficult for his family to bear. Even as he becomes more and more cockroach-like, Grigor spends a huge amount of time worrying about his family's financial situation, demonstrating how fundamental money is. When Grigor first wakes up as a cockroach, he's more concerned about how his transformation will affect his ability to carry out his duties than the actual physical fact of having turned into a repulsive insect. While at first it seems as though Kafka is making a funny absurdist allegory about the disconnect between the way we perceive ourselves and the way others perceive us. This is true on some level, but the mind versus body theme in the story is deeper, more complex. Crucially, the difference between Grigor's human mind and animal body begins to fade as Grigor spends more time as a cockroach, eventually, such as when he moves around frantically when his father frightens him, his thought processes seem human, but his conclusions are decisively insect-like. He struggles when his sister removes his furniture which linked him to his humanity, but ultimately prefers the comfort of a bare room. Gregor's mind follows his body and its descent into insecthood. His physical shape determines his behavior and preferences. The metamorphosis as a whole makes a case not just that the body and mind are linked, but also that the body is the more powerful of the two. After Gregor's transformation, he becomes entirely reliant on his family in the way that they, before his transformation, relied on his wages. His feelings of duty and responsibility towards his family concern him much more than his bizarre physical predicament. Yet his sister, Greta, mother and father are unable to think of him or treat him in the same way as before. Much of their change in attitude is due to their profound interest in conforming to the norm of the society around them. Greta is the most thoughtful, putting aside her preconceptions to bring him the rotten food he likes. But though Grigor imagines guarding the family, he is unable to repay her for her help. When he becomes a cockroach, his relationship with his family becomes unequal, about dependence rather than cooperation. His lack of freedom to act as well as his family's growing frustrations towards him are factors that play into his eventual death. Now the father may bear the major responsibility of his death because of injuring him with the apple, but no one in the family is blameless. At the end of the story, Greta, the mother and the father feel happier and freer once they no longer have to worry about Grigor. In the world of the story, even close family bonds can't triumph over the unequal relationship and the disgust caused by having a cockroach as a son.
Kiko always has the best intentions, but he fails to communicate them effectively and always makes blunders that increase his family's difficulties. The most heart-wrenching example of well-intentioned failed jester comes during Greta's violin concert for the lodgers. Kiko wants to prove that he's not a mere animal and feels that music will offer him the and no nourishment he's lacking. He creeps forward in a fit of optimism and affection, but of course his actions ruin the concert and destroy his family's attempt to make money. In this situation, and in many other moments of failed good intentions, Gigol's problem is his actual inability to communicate. Even without talking, he ought to be able to use his body language to show what he intends, but his insect-like brain prevents him from acting in an understandable way. The Grigor's family first deals with his metamorphosis with concern and sympathy. By the story's end, they are actually happy after his death. The story demonstrates the shifting rules of dependence and sympathy. At first, the dependent Grigor gains the sympathy of his family since he, you know, provides for them, who attempts to be responsible for him. Later, they grew wary, even angered, by their responsibilities towards him. The family's loss of sympathy for Grigor stems from the trouble he's causing them financially and the way he embarrasses them in front of guests. But the biggest block to their sympathy is his loss of his human shape and behavior. <laughs> 